Welcome to Monday Mornings with Michelle, the new business podcast. Whether you're kicking off your day or kickstarting your business, Michelle is going to kick your ass into next week with the essential fours. Strategy, systems, support, and state of mind. Now, welcome to center stage, Michelle Nedelec. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm so glad that you're with us here today because I have the most amazing guest, Steve Sir. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Nice. I am so excited because we've caught Steve, <laughs> the only moments he has left in his day. And so you get to see the real live Steve behind the scenes, and it's going to be awesome and epic. So give us a 5,000 foot view of who you are and what you love to do. You know, uh, my name's Steve Edwards, uh, husband, father, CEO, Premier Virtual. Uh, you know, I have a, a loving wife. We've been together 10 years. We got two small children, a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. That's actually where you see me now as I'm on my way to pick up my seven-year-old. So I'm in Carline and uh, head to the airport to pick up my mom. Uh, from small town, Wisconsin, went to the army after high school and came down to Florida after college and said, I'm done with the snow. I like the palm trees. So nah. here, now, now here I am. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us more about Premier Virtual. So Premier Virtual is a SaaS platform. It is mm -hmm. designed to do virtual events. Um, I, I developed the platform uh, back in 2019. Um, I come from the job fair industry and I was putting on job fairs for nine years in person. I saw a big change, right? The, the trends were showing you know, millennials, Gen Zs, and, and, and younger, they love being online. They would rather wait in line, or I'm sorry, apply online than wait in line. And, and as in the job fair, people stop coming to the events. And guess what happens when people stop coming to the events? Companies don't want to pay you to come to the events. So I had to do something. And I, you know, I found out about virtual, didn't like what was out there. So I developed my own platform. And, you know, we're, you know, we've done over 5,000 virtual hiring events on our platform. We just did a record-breaking uh, event on our platform that had 1,700 companies in one job fair, over 17,000 job seekers, and 1.3 million company booth views. Unbelievable, amazing of something that can be done in the virtual world that could have never been done in the in-person world. Well, wow, and how awesome is that? Not only for the companies, but for the job seekers, like that would open up the planet. I mean, you could have some kid in Wisconsin <laughs> applying for a job in West Palm Beach and you can have, you know, a company in West Palm Beach going, I just want really hard workers from the Midwest and, you know, send them out here. And like, that is awesome. I'm getting chills from yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, virtual opens up the world. I mean, we've done worldwide job fairs. I mean, our some of our clients that are out there, we don't host them. We just, we power the events, right? We're the software behind it. And, you know, a lot of people kind of get confused and, oh, you host all these events. No, we're the platform, right? Like I said, here's it. the easiest thing. Think of me as the hotel, right? In an in-person job fair, we're just more efficient. We just have more, more rooms <laughs> that you can go to. And we allow a lot more people to come in. And, we, and guess what? We give you a whole lot more analytics. But to be able to put something on where somebody is in uh, the Army, they're getting out of the Army overseas, and they can now interview with all of these companies here in the United States and have a plan before they get out. It's oh, just, it's, a, it's amazing of what can be done oh my god i love that because um you may not know <laughs> i'm from calgary in canada and yep. it is notoriously a matter of not what you know but who you know to be able to get jobs around here and there's notoriously awesome job <laughs> it is a wicked place to work it's very entrepreneurial it's a lot of fun um and you can specialize in almost anything you want to which is super cool but to get that premier job, you got to know some premier peoples. Whereas with your platform, your service, you can get in that proverbial door knocking. That is awesome. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the thing about it too is, you know, I was having a conversation last night with this guy at a networking event and I'm an in-person guy. I love in-person. I, I love networking <laughs> events. I built my, you know, I built my job fair company. I'm going to breakfast networking events, lunch networking events, and evening networking events. I was networking, networking, networking. And that's how I built the job fair company. Now that was pre-wife, pre-kids, and I could do that. Now it's a little <laughs> bit different. 
but I was, you know, I was at this event last night and we were talking and, you know, he said, he's a recruiter and he goes, you know, I just, you know, job fairs have always turned me off because, you know, the people that we recruit are higher level director, you know, VPs and C-level. And I go, have you ever thought about a virtual career fair for a C-level executives? He goes, you can do that. I never thought about that. And that's the thing about virtual in 2018, December, We'd, we'd already run some virtual job fairs to kind of test it of what we were getting into. And I said, I'm going 100% virtual. I was at a LinkedIn local uh, networking event and I announced it and everybody there were recruiters and they all laughed at me and they said, virtual will never work. They all had it. And I was like, you know, I said, just hold my wait. beer, <laughs> I, you know, I was like, hold my beer. Right. I just didn't know that that beer was going to be a Corona, you know, that, that, yeah. that uh, you know, kind of came in and it, it changed the world. Right. right? Like, unfortunately, you know, for my business, right. COVID, you know, kind of took, saved me three years of marketing and getting it out there. But right. what people are now seeing and, and, and a lot of the people from that event that night, have called me, emailed me, or sent me LinkedIn messages to say, not only congratulations, but wow, we now see what you were talking about. And if you watch trends like I do, you can really see that, right? Trends are going to, you know, change things. And that was something that I saw. And it took a pandemic to open a lot of people's eyes. But if you look at not even just my business, if you look at the, right, the Facebooks and the Googles of the world, what did they say? You can now work remote forever, mm -hmm. right? Two years ago, people would say, hey, I want to work remote. And they're like, you can't get stuff done. It's not efficient. Everything. And people suddenly got thrown into work at home with their kids, right? You got kids are on school, mom, dad, one's working in the office, one's working in the living room, one's in the dining room sometimes, and they didn't have an office and they got it done. So now companies are like, I guess you can work, right? And oh, do you want to work in California, but you don't want to live there anymore and you want to live somewhere else? Hey, go move anywhere you want to. So now you can live anywhere you want yep. and not have to commute. Right. You know, you don't have to drive. You don't have to do all that, right? Be stuck in traffic and, and deal with the stress of traffic. You can get up, shower, throw on your top, keep your shorts on in the bottom, whatever you want. And you look professional and you're ready for your day. You're ready for your meetings. You're ready for your sales calls or whatever it is. And you can work, you know, and, and, and people learned how to be efficient. People learn how to be effective during COVID. And they learn that I don't have to be stuck in a stuffy office if I don't want to. Now, I personally like to go to the office. So I give my team the complete option of, do you want to go to the office or do you want to work from home? They all have it. Some work from home all the time. Some are in the office every day. Some work part-time, part-time. I give them the choice of what they want to be able to do because I, I think that. that's so what people talk, want. Talk to me about how people get engaged with you. So I'm assuming, obviously, if you're going to host a job fair, <laughs> that would be an ideal client for you. Somebody's going to come in and just go, yep, let's set her up and life is grand, which is awesome and obvious. What about companies that are looking for international employees, <laughs> potentially, um, and they want to be part of the platform, they want to understand more about the job fairs that are going on do you offer any kind of um, directory or systems where business owners can get in yeah so we have you know we have clients from all over workforce development boards to private companies that use us uh, so really anybody can see what we do at premiervirtual.com uh, and they can come in see what we do see how we do it but if a company we have companies that'll come to us and say i don't want to host my own event you know, I'm just a small company. I want to be an event in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Well, we can go to our workforce development client that's up there and say, hey, we have an organization that wants to be in an event. Can you put on an event for them? You know, or can they join one of your events? And they're able to do that. But now, now if that same company, and we get this a lot, where they'll attend, they'll attend an event you know, they reached out to organization and they were participated in an event that was on our platform. Then they saw how easy our platform was, was how much they loved it, how the interaction and the analytics was there. So then they call us and say, we want to do a national hiring event on the platform. Or 
we want to do a regional hiring event on the platform. So it really opens up, um, you know, people from small companies want to do an event just for their company. Um, you know, we have organizations on our enterprise side that they do weekly hiring events on the platform. Wow. So, so they like, have for, it. talk to me it's about open. affordability. And, like how does, how small of a company does it make sense that you could do that or that they have to go and find five of your friends the same size and then it makes economical sense? It, we really have packages to meet any budget, you wow. know, and I know people say that, but, you know, we have packages from our enterprise clients that are paying, you know, two ninety nine dollars a month mm -hmm. to people that are paying unlimited events that are paying a little bit more. So we have, uh, we have, uh, um, you know, any budget for any type of client, small clients, big clients, anything like that as well. Nice. Love that. So peeps, if you're listening to this right now and you're in hiring mode, go to premiervirtual.com and go and check it out because uh, it just makes sense. Like that's ridiculous not to. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, it, and it's effective, right? And, and, and a good thing too about virtual over analytics in, mm -hmm. or, or over virtual over in-person is there's more analytics. Right. So you can track everything and see, Hey buddy, come on in. Daddy's on a, daddy's on a call and you can say hi. Hello. Uh, you can see all the analytics of everybody that is, that's in the event, you know, what they looked at. We, we can see a host and see, that's how we know that this organization had, Hey buddy. Uh, uh, they had 1.3 million booth views because they have, it's all tracked, right? And that's what the hosts are able to see. So they can now go to a company and say, hey, you had 72 people that visited your booth. You chatted with this many. This is how many people submitted their resume. This is how many people um, uh, got that you scheduled interviews with. That's great ROI. And that's what the hosts of the events are really looking for. So, hey, buddy. Hey, can you get buckled in, please? You want to? Oh. Do it again. Do it again. Say hi. Okay. All right. Say hi, buddy. This is this is my. Uh, can you tell? Can you say your name? Are oh, you gonna be shy? Was it pajama day at school today? Yeah. <laughs> so we're. Uh, awesome. Yeah. This is. Uh, Carline's a little crazy. This is actually the first time I. I pick him up. Usually I drop him off every single morning, and my wife picks him up. But we have picking him up and then going to the airport. So it's. Uh, oh, it's good! It is the holidays. It is fine. You get to go to school in your jams. Man, the last time I went to school about 20 years ago, jams were just in in fashion. And I was like, oh, yes, yeah. I get to wear jams to school. <laughs> 30 yeah, I, years old yeah. and I was super excited. <laughs> I remember like when I moved down here to South Florida. Oh, uh, when I moved down here to South Florida, it mm. was a, um, I'm like going to school and uh, I came down here and they had people are going to school in their beach outfits. And I'm like, what is this? Got it. Um, and I loved it. I was like, you know, because people are going to the beach and coming to class and then going back to the beach. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go so, surfing during lunch. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had people doing that. It was, it was just such a change for me. You know, my life was in the army was such a structured life. And then there was five of us from the army that came down here. And it was just so interesting that when you got down here and you just saw such a big change, right? Such a difference um, right. of, of where everything was at. But my plan was originally stay down here for a year and move uh, up, to, up to North Florida to go to a bigger university. And then I realized I don't wanna go to a bigger university. I like the school that I went to. And I was a little bit older, so all my friends were older. They were already in the business world. So I'm learning from them. I'm learning, you know, about business, about sales. And, and you know, that education was just as good as my college education because I'm learning and I'm seeing it's out there and, and knowing. And that's why I'm where I'm at today is because I take everything that I learned and put it into the business that we're doing. Exactly. Knowledge is only knowledge until you get to do it. And then all of a sudden, you know it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I try no. to do I try to do the same thing. Like, 
with my son, we, you know, we don't do it every single day, but like I do training videos and I'll have them listen to training videos, my right? sales training videos, leadership videos, he'll have it. And then it's like, Hey, you got to watch the question. And then we have the, um, hold on. Just, hold on. Okay. In between down and my scars. Okay. Um, and <laughs> <So> then uh, <laughs> we we would have him, so then he'll watch the videos with me, and then I make him answer the questions. I'll re you know the, oh, read yeah. the questions out, uh, and then we'll go over and we'll go over the questions together. So I think it's you know nice. I think it's very important. You know we we try to teach him very early about money and you know stuff like that because it's very easy for kids to say you know I want this, I want this, I want this, and it's like. Why does daddy work hard? You know, why is daddy sometimes not home at night? Cause I'm working, right? Like this, this morning, my son, my four-year-old said, I want to go up to Wisconsin because I want to make a snowman at Mima Pat's house. Aww. And I go, okay. I go, we probably can't go this year, but maybe next year I go, but what does it take to go up there and to get on the name? And he goes, airplanes cost money. We need to make money. <laughs> You know, dad go to work, you know, and it's yep. funny because Grant, <laughs> you know, Grant, Card <laughs> yeah, Grant Cardone talks about that. It's like, you know, when you go home, your wife and your kids should say, you know, how many sales did you do today? What did you do today? What did you do to, to do this? And it's funny, and I don't do it Grant Cardone style, but mm -hmm. I have those conversations early with my kids because I think it's very important to know uh, where, where, you know, what's going on in life. So, so absolutely <laughs> put your sunglasses on you're trying to say oh my hi God, i love it i love yeah. it i'm getting flashbacks when my munchkinite was at uh, itty bitty love it and he yes, likes to be on camera he likes to be on camera too love it right is a show yeah, we awesome yeah he is he definitely definitely is so i want to be on it i know you do but awesome and i will time. let you honey bunny that is yeah. fantastic hey can you say premiervirtual.com? Can you say it? What's daddy's company's name? Uh, you know it. Say it. Premier. Oh, you're going to be shy. Yet. Now okay, you can say it later. Good. That's okay. We'll say yeah. it later and we'll we'll get it on a GIF and we'll send it to you. Because that to me is just the cutest when they say your company name. And, you know, it's good for advertising. <laughs> yeah, abs absolutely. So we, yeah, we, they love it. They love to come to the office. So we built a, we built a really good office. We put a gym in the office. So they like to come to the office too. you know, go to the gym, go to the lounge. So. Awesome. I love that. Yes. I used to read uh, my, my financial books to my son as bedtime stories because I needed to read it and he needed a story. So he's like, why do they keep repeating themselves? I'm like, they do kind of repeat themselves. <laughs> I do. They're, they're, a lot of them are the same, but you know, it's like you're, you're ingraining them early, you know, and, right? you know, I always, I always say this because people are like, oh, well, do you want your son to, you know, follow in your footsteps? And I go, you know, I don't know what his path is, right? They're four and they're seven. And I used to say, I wanted him to be a firefighter because he wanted to be a firefighter. And I had this plan worked out as, Hey, you could go and you could be a firefighter and you go to the air force, you become in and, uh, you know, in the air force, you become a firefighter. Then you come to go to college afterwards while you're a firefighter, you know, and you have all these things and you're making all this money and you become, an, you know, a captain real early on and you're doing really, really well. And you don't have to deal with the crazy stress of developing a software, which I learned is a crazy stress. I go, but you have different kinds of stress. But it's like, you know what, whatever they want to do. And that's right. what I look, I, I heard early on and um, I was the president of the company I worked for one time and you know this guy was a defense uh, d1 college basketball player you know he was like six seven he's president of the company like the 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 all-american guy and you know he was he was giving us a speech one time he's like you know my son came to me and said dad I want to be a cupcake maker when I get older he goes you know the first thing I, I thought of is I want you to be an athlete like me. He goes, but I didn't say that. Look at him and said, you know what, son? I don't care if you want to be a cupcake maker or anything that you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do in life. Just be the best at it. Be the best cupcake maker you can be. And I've always taken that in my mind and go, you know what? That is such a great advice because so many people push their kids, push their kids, push their kids to do something, right? I love sports, right? I play sports. You know, I, I wrestled, I boxed through high school, I boxed in the military, and I love sports. 
but I'm not going to just force my kids to do something that they don't want to do. And I see, you know, friends that I have that are just, just like, it's all weekend. They're pushing their kids, pushing kids, pushing kids, mm -hmm. and their kids hate it. You know, both yeah. my kids are in jujitsu and they like it. You know, my, my oldest here, he wanted to play soccer. So I said, okay, great. We put him in soccer. My youngest, who's just, he doesn't want to play sports. I go, do you want to play t-ball? No. Nope. Do you want to do gymnastics? No, nope. I don't want to do anything. He loves jujitsu. That's all he wants to do, but he gets to do it with his older brother. So I think he likes, you know, that, yeah. that thing together, but I just don't feel like, you know, forcing it. Yes. I, I want him to read books with me. I want him to listen to this stuff because I think in everything, right. You can teach them young, you know, you can teach them about money. You, you can't teach them too early about money and responsibility. Nice. I love that. Totally agree. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to take you back. I got to ask you this question. At what point in life did you know you were a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Uh, pretty early. I think, you know, my, you know, I look all the way back to my first job. My first job was working for a company and I sold furniture, 16 years old. And I just loved people. You know, I, I, I loved people and I was there, you know, I got into the army because I really, you know, like my mom gave me everything, you know, growing up, right. Especially what she gave me was love and teaching me about responsibility. She always said I had a champagne taste on a water budget, always said <laughs> that to me. And, you know, I, and I was just always ingrained in me is I always wanted more. I always wanted more. I always wanted more. And, you know, I went to corporate world. Um, I mean, I started a, a, a business in college with my buddy. That was our first kind of go around. Uh, as we started a thing and it was all it was is, hey, this bar came to us and said, you're in a fraternity. We want to grow as a bar. Can you help us? So instantly I was like, money yeah. how can i make money out of this so i put together this plan with my buddy and, and and we started this that's that was our first go around um and then you know after college i went to the corporate world got recruited into the corporate world and just i was like man i'm making other people rich but i stayed in it why because it was a job it was money it was there well then kind of i went you know, the company I was working with at the time was they wanted me to move back to, I was in San Diego. They wanted me to move back to Atlanta and kind of open up their shop for them, uh, open up their industry there. And I did it. And then after a while it was, I'm reporting to them, I'm making them a ton of money. I'm not making as much as I could be making. And I'm like, why am I making other people rich? It's time to make myself rich and, and, and go after it. That was my big thing was the money. Right. I wasn't thinking about all the other stuff. I was thinking about money, 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 money. That's all I was thinking about. And then I realized, wow, it's a lot harder to run a business. You know, we were, we didn't have an accounting department. We didn't have anything. My business partner, and I, we both had a debit card. We both had a debit card. And that was what we did. There was money in the bank on a monthly basis. We didn't, we didn't know anything about business. We knew how to make money, but we didn't know how to, do anything else so then i went in and uh you know i ended up uh we brought in a third partner who kind of kind of took us over and ran the business side of things um and this was all kind of in the mortgage industry and then and this is 07 everybody knows kind of what happened in 07 um and you know the other guy kind of took everything over so he took all of our responsibility but he said hey i'll pay all the bills i'll do everything you guys just bring in the money that was perfect for us uh, but then the mortgage industry kind of went down um, to where it was at. And I got recruited back into corporate America. And I was there and I was traveling pre kids, traveling, 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 traveling. Um, my main markets were New York, New Jersey, Florida, Texas. So I would live in a, live out of a suitcase, go in and I was building sales teams. Um, and that's all I would do for the, for the companies. I build a sales team and I just manage all my sales teams from there company shut down the division I was in and I didn't like the two other divisions and I was like okay Don I came back down here to Florida and I went to my buddy and I said I got an idea for us he's like what's that I go we're gonna start putting on job fairs he's like job fairs and I go yes he was like college and I go no get in the car we're gonna go for a ride we're gonna go and look at some of these job fair companies that are going in Florida was the most competitive market in the entire country and job fairs there was always job fairs going not so I went and I showed him and I said, he's like, okay, well, how are we going to do this? I go, there's a company out of New Jersey that I know we can go in and, and we called them and we said, we don't want to work for you, but we want to work with you. 
So we ended up buying the license agreement for his company. And this was when we really said, okay, we're starting a business, we're going. And again, it was thinking about the money, thinking about making other people rich, thinking about how we can, we can do this. So that was our, essentially, I guess my third time into the entrepreneur thing, but it always came back is I wanted to make more money. Um, and by this time I knew there was more responsibility. Um, and then we, you know, we had it and we built, you know, we built that business and, you know, then fortunately, um, you know, I went the virtual route. Um, the organization was in New Jersey, wanted nothing to do with virtual. So we kind of parted ways in 2018. Um, and, and this is where we really took off, you know, now, you know, and I look at it, I don't know everything in business. I'll be the first one to admit that I got, you know, some phenomenal mentor teams that I work with and they help me in places I don't know, but I hired people that were smarter than me in different aspects of it. And now I feel that, Hey, we have a great team, but you know, I don't, you know, corporate America wasn't, wasn't for me because I just felt like there was always more, there's more out there. And, you know, corporate America, you know, it's like, okay, you got red tape and you got to do it this way and this way and this way. And I just, I was always an outside the box thinker. How do we think outside the box? And, you know, that's why, right. The, the virtual that nobody was really doing was, was an idea that I had. And people said, no, people didn't want to, you know, didn't think it was going to work. And that's why I thought I was such a, you know, good entrepreneur, because I was like, I'm not going to listen to people telling me, no, I'm not going to listen to people laughing at me. I'm, I'm going to continue to run with it. That's what I give, you know, when, when, when I, you know, do speeches and talk to people that are thinking about getting into entrepreneurship, I'm like, listen, don't listen to people. You know, I was on a call one time and, and this guy was, we were talking and they were like, well, what would you tell somebody that's, that, that wants to start their own business? I go, don't listen to anybody else when they tell you no. And this other guy was like, I disagree with that completely. I go, so all these people, right. Me, you know, even Bezos, people told them they were crazy, right. That things couldn't be done. All these ideas that are out there that are successful. It's because, and people told them, no, I go, what are you going to tell that person? What if the next great idea is out there and you told that person, no, because you didn't believe in it, but all these other people believed in it. And all these other people think that it can make their life easier. It can solve their, their problems, right? It can, and right. And that's what any, anything out there is. Why is it successful? Because it solves somebody's problem doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a, you know, a tangible, intangible, whatever it is, it solves somebody's problem. I go, and if you're going to tell them no, right, that, that's there because they've never thought about it, it's wrong. I was, I was, you know, um, I, I spoke at a, uh, an event last week and the, the second speaker that was there was she's wrote three books and she's been on the New York Times bestsellers that's in there. And she was like, you know, when I wrote my first book, I gave it to my family and my family said, don't write it. Don't, don't write this book. And her, her author, the person that you know, helped to write it goes, why are you going to listen to your family? Have they ever wrote a book? Have they been in this situation? She's like, no, he goes, I've wrote books. Why are you going to do this? And she was like, number four, um, on like the professional biographies. She was like, I even beat out Trump. And on this, and she was like so excited. And it was, it was because she wrote a thing on, on Facebook one time that said, I just got fired. And she just, it went crazy. She was on Elvis Duran. They're like, you're going to write a book, right? She's like, I never thought about writing a book. But she goes, I didn't listen to my family who told me no. Because everybody's going to tell you your idea isn't going to work. How is this going to work? Because they've never gone through with it. They've never taken that chance. And that's what I tell people. Take chances, go through with it. If you're not going to take a chance, you can. I mean, I sat down, you know, when, when I switched to virtual, I went to my business partner and said, we're switching. And I went to my wife and I was like, you see, you know, we're going to develop a software. And it's going to take all of our savings. It's going to take everything that we got. And I may not, may not make money for a couple of years. And she's like, you know, we got two young kids, but I believe in you. So I married you and uh, let's go. And she was, you know, Aww. she, she was, you know, she's my rock. You know, my business partner is my rock. They're there and, uh, you know, they're the two of them are, you know, listen to everything that I said when they thought when everybody else told me I was crazy. Those were the two people that that believed in me and listened to me. And uh, I'm glad they did. Oh. And I'm glad I didn't listen to anybody else.
I love that. That is awesome. And damn, you are a good storyteller. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> that is awesome. It's my I first love- time I've ever said this story. <laughs> So. <laughs> awesome well thank you so much for your time it's been awesome and amazing um well i will absolutely send people to premium virtual to go and do the job fair i know you're picking up your mom we won't interrupt you on that one any last words for our peeps no you know if you want more information on you know how a virtual career fair works even if you don't want to like do one right now but you want to know how it works yeah reach out to us at premiervirtual.com. You can go there. You can set up a 10 minute strategy call with my team to to find out a little bit more. And and, and is this something that your business can work with? There, say hello there. Gotta say premiervirtual.com now. You gotta say it. You gotta say her. She's gonna hang up on you. She's gonna hang up on you if you don't. Uh, (laughs) All right, thanks buddy. Okay. There when you need them. <laughs> so, well, all right. Well, I I appreciate your time. You know, thank you so much. And again, if anybody out there is, just wants information, they can see, right? We have replays of webinars we do. We get our clients to talk to our other clients to show them to how to be successful on there. You know, we we dedicate, we have a whole team that all is a success. That's what's a competitive advantage over us is my team. My team is amazing, um, helping people set up their events, helping organizations train. I mean, we've done Instagram lives for people that are looking for jobs because we want to make sure we do this on a daily basis. They don't. Our team is phenomenal behind the scenes. You know, we're all based here in South Florida and we try to help, you know, we try to help people because it's a really tough time when Mm -hmm. people are looking for jobs, looking for a job is not fun. You know, and, and we try to make it, you know, really easy with the platform and, you know, try to take out some of the craziness. Nice. Love that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for being here. I appreciate you going off the fly, even though things weren't working the way you wanted to. Peeps, this hey, is that's, Michelle. That's called real life. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelik. Thank you for being here with us today. I love being a resource for entrepreneurs. So please give the show a five-star rating so that everybody can, you can get everybody's attention and continue listening to the Business Ownership Podcast. We love having you here. Thank you for listening to our show. I am all about being a resource center for entrepreneurs to give them the information and the support they need to make it in business. As such, I have Taking Your Business Digital Q&A every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain. To register for that, go to awarenessstrategies.com slash digital. That's D-I-G-I-T-A-L. I look forward to meeting you and actually finding out how you are. So see you on the flip side.